Hey everybody, what's up? I'm out checking the equipment and make sure I'm all ready for field day. So today I'm going to show you how I built the Slim Jim, designed a custom 3D part, and then sent it to my Enderpro 3D printer. I think we're going to have fun today, so don't go away. As you've seen in my previous DIY vertical antenna videos, I took a 30-foot jackite fiberglass pole, created some 3D parts, and built a fun vertical antenna solution. But I didn't want to stop there. I designed this mount made from PLA filament that I'll hang near the top of the telescopic pole. To counter the added weight and pull from the coax, I built in two guide line holes to the mount. With these, I can use paracord to offset the pressure on the pole. The Slim Jim build is extremely lightweight at about 95 grams. Hey guys, a quick time out. L let me introduce myself. My name's Steve Payne, W0KNI, and I make YouTube videos for ham radio, electronic, RC planes, and drones. If you like this content, 
take a minute and give me a thumbs up. It really helps the amateur radio community and the hobby community to find our videos. If you want more of my content, then hit the subscribe button below. That way you can be notified whenever I post a new video. So let's get back at it. We got that thing up in the air and got it ran to the radio. <laughs> Let's see if this really works. All right, moment of truth here. What you're reading there is a sweep of the vertical with the 2 meter 70 centimeter Slim Jim attached to it. Whiskey 0 Kilo November India radio test, W0KNI radio test. Any station out there that can verify the antenna getting out, this is W0KNI. Anybody out there, W0KNI radio test. Roger, Roger, Michael. Well, we're glad to have you this afternoon, and we do appreciate you being here. Sierra Kilo Papa, and he is in Tennessee, and I'm going to move this beam back around for D. Anything I find about it, maybe a little noise, a little hum kind of going on, but uh, the other thing is they pull dust into your house. Okay, hey, I just wanted to wrap things up. So, had some, you know, honestly, some kind of mixed results with this. Initially, it worked great. The radio was responding. I seemed to make a transmission, although it didn't make any contact, but I was activating pretty far away repeater. I was running 25 watts. However, within a couple of minutes, I wasn't receiving anything. So there's there was something going on here, almost as if something became capacitive. I'd appreciate any help. Make a comment below uh, what you think. I ran a test with my handheld, connected directly to the antenna, lowered it uh, from the top of the vertical, and I was able to get out pretty consistently. Uh, I was able to hear very consistently. But then as soon as I started adding coax to it, first a 10 foot piece, then things started getting a little sketchy. So my next step is I'm um, gonna add some different ferrites right here. I'm going to uh, run some ferrites up here. I've got about five or six, I think, number 31s. I'm gonna add those to here and see if that makes a difference. So this worked with the handheld up on the vertical, although it was not consistent with the 991. One. Uh, one other note was if I uh, undid the coax from the back of the radio, took off the ground piece and just let, left the uh, center conductor stuck slightly in, so the ground piece was not connected, only the center conductor, then I could hear. So that was kind of throwing me because the cables are all good. The continuity is all good. I was probably running 75 feet of RG8X with a couple of coax connectors. So I don't know. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know if you've experienced the same thing. Hey, uh, make a note below, down below, we'll see if we can't come up with a solution. I'm going to add some more uh, ferrites to this and I'll let you know. I'll give you an update. Till then, W0KNI clear. <laughs>